This morning, it's a real privilege to share the word with you. Um, I first just want to start off by, by thanking the Lord for, for Pa Benema Sonia and um, for the apostolic grace. I want to specifically highlight the apostolic grace that God has sent over our lives and we receive you and say, receive your voice. Thank you very much for who you, are, who you are. We honor you. And I want to say that if any church is not, any church, any, any group, any movement is not connected to apostolic grace, they're not really going anywhere. You need to be connected to the apostolic in this season. So this morning I want to speak to us on the one in the one. So the one with a capital letter in the one. And um, trust that the Lord will bless us with, through the word. And that you'll, really, uh, that you'll really experience God speaking to you. And that shifts and movements will take place. And that we will be empowered. We must never come to the word and listen to the word and go away as if we just listened to a, a nice sermon. But we must always be open that movement and change will come to, into our lives. That a shift will move that will, a shift will happen in the heavenlies over us, that a change, change will happen with the word is shared in my school, my, the government of the country, our city, and everywhere we find ourselves. So we, that must be our expectation. That's what the word of the Lord is doing. Now, in Isaiah 40 verse 3, the prophet Isaiah prophesies of, of the, the, the voice of one, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He says, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, John, uh, that, this was a mandate of John the Baptist, and his mandate was in the wilderness. And you'll see this morning, I want to connect this word to Passover, and that we must make those migrations. Just, uh, uh, just a thought that I had this morning. You know, when the, the 12 spies went to spy the, the promised land, 10 came back and were very negative. And two of them came back with faith. And uh, Pa Ben always says something. He says, uh, money is not, uh, 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 money, the problem with money is identity. Uh, 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 because people devalue themselves. They are not able to receive money. They don't think it will come their way. They don't think they are worthy. And that's the problem. So people devalue themselves. So what happened with the 10 spies, when they looked at the promised land, they devalued themselves because they said, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes, and therefore they could not possess. So if we, not, if we don't see ourselves the full value, what Lita spoke about, Abraham fell asleep like Jesus, fell as, uh, like Jesus slept on the cross when God did everything for him. So God entered into the covenant. God swore by himself and gave Abraham the value, Abraham the promises. So we must receive we, our equalization of value. We must be equal. We are equal to God, not because of what we are doing, but because of who He is. All right, there are certain things that God can do with, that we can't do. But most of the things, He's given us the value that we can be in relationship with Him. And I want to say to you this morning, do not devalue yourself. Despite your past, despite what you've done, despite anything that has gone wrong in your life, I want to say to you, you, are, you have the value of Christ this morning, because that's exactly what Christ did. Christ could not be raised from the dead if we were not justified. So we are justified, we have been given value, and let us see ourselves as God sees us. They should have said, we are like heroes in the eyes of God in, in our own eyes. And because of that value, they could have been possessed. So the possession is connected to how we value ourselves. And that value comes from God and what, how He sees us. So uh, John came from the wilderness. John must prepare the way of the Lord. He must make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now John the Baptist confirmed it in, it's, he, he, he confirmed it in John verse 1 verse 23. Very important. John had also had to find, like Jesus, like we heard in, in Plet two weeks ago, John also had to learn through the scriptures, through suffering, through, through promises, through the revelation of the Spirit, through his parents, what everybody told him. He had to believe what God called him for. He had to read himself into, into Isaiah and also believed what God called, God called him. Therefore, he could say, what, he could call himself what God called him. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So John had a revelation of the one. 
God the one. He says, the one crying in the wilderness makes straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, one among us, one among you. Now we go to John 1, verse 24 to 28. John answered them. This was in the beginning of John, where the Pharisees came to John, and they wanted to know, who are you? But John was then baptizing on the other side of the Jordan. Not on the promised land side, on the other side. In other words, almost, to put it this way, on the wrong side of the Jordan. So he said, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you who whom you do not know. It is he, in other words, he's not revealed to you yet. Because I'm still here. I'm the one preaching to you. My time is here now. So I'm, pro I'm teaching to you. But among you stands my my predecessor, the one that will follow the, which is with greater glory, he's standing among, among you. It is he coming after me, is preferred before me. In other words, I can't even match up to his value. Whose sandal straps I'm not worthy to lose. What's, that's got to do with his ministry. His sandals, remember, the, the feet of peace, bringing the good news. And so I can't even do anything to his ministry. When he moves... I can't, I can't take over his shoes. I can't step into his shoes. I can't lose any shoes and step into his shoes. He is the one. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Can anybody tell me what Beth means? House. House. All right, you must always, Beth is house. So this was a, a house. Um, the house, it, it's called House of Ford. A ford is where the river is very shallow so that you can go through. It's like a shallow water breach. It's a ford. Or it means the house of crossing, or it means, means a house of ferry. In other words, John came and prepared a way that you could even go through the river of death, death to self, into the promised land, into what God has, uh, has for each and every one of us. That is the place of passing over, passing over the wilderness into the promised land. Passing into the destiny that God has for us. And the passing over into the promises that God has for us. I just feel to say this morning, do not think it is over. There's a new season. And everyone sitting here this morning, and I mean everyone has been qualified for this new season. The fact that you've, in fact, all you had to do was come today. Uh, you, it's actually the fact that you're here. It's just, you give yourself a... Uh, 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 tap on the shoulder and say, well done, self. You've done well. You got out of bed. It's like this one secretary of mine said to me, Tinas, you know what? She told me, Lida and I, she said, Tinas, you know, for me to be, to be me takes me an hour in the morning. But even if it took you an hour, you are here this morning. You are welcome. And you are entering into the promises. You did not stay away. So he says, this was beyond the Jordan. Now, look where John operates. And what I, I'm going to bring some symbolism out on John. And this is no, this is no negativity on John or, um, or bringing down who he was. Because the, the Bible says he was the greatest born from women, but least than the, that anyone born from above. So, or, or from the kingdom of God. But I want to say certain things about John because we must see ourselves in this. And I believe God is encouraging us this morning and say, your time is not over. And don't do what John has done. Don't, come, don't go all the way with all the revelations and all the prophecies and then not entering and then stop and then not enjoying what God has for us. So, he's, so the, John was beyond the door, Jordan. Look where John is operating. A great deal of the church is still beyond the Jordan, has not entered into do not value themselves enough to enter. So John was baptizing there. Now, verse 29 then says, And John bore witness, saying, I saw, what, what you can go and study for yourself is John 1, how it refers to the next day, and the next day. And then John 2, verse 1 says, And on the third day, there was a wedding. So there's just a lot of symbolism in, the, in that, but I don't want it. It will take time, so I'm not going to go into that. But just how it builds up and how the revelation builds up eventually to come to the wedding. And on the third day, there was a wedding, John 2 verse 1. But you can go and study it for yourself. But I'm going to read some of the, those scriptures. He says, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you who, who you do not know. 
It is you coming after me is preferred before me with sandals. These things were done in Bethara. I just want to catch the line. And then the next verse, and John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. Like a dove, a dove is gentle. Now remember the spirit is gentle. He, he operates gentle. If, even if, if the spirit can address something, remember when God addresses something in our lives, in our city, he always wants to remove the evil because he wants to, to take us into the better, into the better promises. Many times people think God is against them. No, God is against the negative. God is against the things that harm us. So sometimes when the apostolic word goes out, it goes out very fiercely sometimes, very addresses things. But the heart of the apostolic is gentle. The, 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 the mark of the apostolic is a gentle mark. It's coming from a heart that loves, like a father that, uh, that, uh, that sorts his sons out. He loves them, and he wants to protect them from evil, and therefore he sorts them out. So he, 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 uh, so he said, the Spirit remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is you who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So there was a revealing of the Son of God. So John testify of the Son of God. Jo John stands on the outside and many times we can find ourselves and we can even uh, everything, we can celebrate everything that God has done. We can look at the work that Jesus has done. We can praise his name. We can say he's holy. But we must always see ourselves included in him. Because otherwise, it is just religion. It, we, just, we just applaud what he has done. And it's not taking anything away that what God has done. But we must see ourselves in Jesus. For the young people, I don't know if you, rem if you remember Casimir. It was, it was like this. It was this. Um, okay. This, it, was, it, was a, it was an artist, and, and there was a man in him, and, and, and the children loved Casimir on, on, on TV. And, um, and, and I always explain it this, if, if it, it, we are, when we are in Christ, is the, you in there, uh, I, I think you don't, you, you don't follow this example. The fact is, you are, you are covered in him. You see Jesus on the out, but whenever Jesus has done anything, you are in him. You are in him, you are, you, and, you, and this is how we must see ourselves. Okay, um, I remember I used Casimir on all the youth camps, but I must get a new, I must get a new, Barney, Barney. <laughs> and I've seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So John testifies of him. Um, it happens through the Spirit in the form of a dove, how this, he saw the Spirit on Jesus. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. You will see there that the Pharisees came to him, and they said to him, are you the prophet? Are you uh, the Christ? Are you Elijah? He, they said, are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? Or are you the Christ? So the Pharisees understood the prophets, and then Elijah must be sent, and then Christ. But they did not discern. So they were standing in front of Elijah, because he was the Elijah that had to come, before the Christ could come. But they did not discern that they are speaking to the, the, the Elijah, that, that the Bible promised would come. So again, the next day, John stood, this is now verse 35, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, so John had a prophetic revelation of Jesus. But, and remember, there was a connection because Jesus was his nephew through Mary and Elizabeth, but he did not know Jesus after the flesh because he said, I do not know him. He, he had a revelation of Jesus through the Spirit. He says, um, and looking at Jesus, as he walked, he said, behold, the lamp of God. So John had this revelation that is the lamp of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following and said to them, what do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. So once again, Jesus, what we built in the apostolic must be worth seeing. Our life must be worth seeing. When they said to Jesus, where are you staying? He said, come and see. We must be able to tell people when we, when we preach, we must preach from a, a position of, on a vantage point from, uh, we preach who we are, not who we want to become. 
So when we preach that, we can say to people, come and see, come and look at our lives. Come and see. That's, it's, a, it's a display of, of, of the kingdom. He says, where are you staying? He said, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. So they remained with him. They did not go away. Then this one of the two who had heard John speak, uh, uh, that was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He was first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found so one. Now they have discovered the Christ. They have a revelation of the Christ. And he went immediately to his brother. And he said, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought, and, and, and he br- brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone, which is translated rock. Now very important. When we come to Jesus, and there's a difference between the 5,000 and the disciples. God is looking for a group of people. God is looking for a company. That company can be big or small. And this doesn't mean we're the only company. Worldwide, God is looking for a company. People that will follow the lamp wherever you go. Now, when, that, when, you, are, when you are as a disciple called to Jesus, immediately what happens when you come close to Jesus, Jesus prophesies over you. Jesus confirmed the promises of God, the purpose of God um, over our lives. And this is what he did with Simon. Jesus prophesied over Simon and he speaks his identity. So when they came to Jesus, immediately they found identity. They, they, were, not, they were not like a, 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 a wave just tossed through to and fro by the wind. They had purpose. There was surety in their lives. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. So this is now, if you, as I said, you count the days, you will see the thir- first, second, and third day. Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. So immediately, we, Jesus started migrating. Jesus started moving. He was on his way. And he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to, him, said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Well, come and see. You see, Philip had the experience now. He had the revelation. Jesus was, was revealed to him. So he said, You must come and see. But there is something good coming from, from Nazareth. The principle here is, Who is God calling in this season? It's calling us from among our brothers. From the one that you played with, the one that you were friends with, God has now called that one to be the one. You, know, you hear me? You, yeah, you follow. So, yes, something good can come from Nazareth. Come and see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said of him. So, immediately, everyone that came in contact with Jesus, there was a supernatural elevation, a revelation, and there was an identity, a calling, and a purpose, and a drawing. So we, in the apostolic, must also experience the same. We mustn't just come to church and be part of this company because we want a nice church in the city. We must know when we are part of an apostolic company, we have been called to greater purposes. And I'll show you later how we enter those purposes. Because it is very elementary this morning. But you will see it will speak to our hearts and our minds of how we must enter, how we must commit ourselves, and how important it is to follow Christ wherever he goes. So the disciples have a, have a revelation of the Son of God and the Son of Man. Jesus speaks to them on the, of the Son of Man, but they have a, re, a revelation that he's the Son of God. So when they got the revelation that he's the Son of God, he gave them a revelation that he's the Son of Man. John 1 verse 43, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him. So this is now Nathaniel. He says, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi. So, so Jesus knew something that happened to Nathaniel under the fig tree. He, maybe his discussion with God, his secrets with God. Jesus had a revelation of that. And he said, I, I saw you when you were there. So immediately, not just because of the miracle, but because of he, he's once again coming in the presence of Jesus and with a believing heart. We must always, never ever, if I can give you this advice, always be forgiving Always be, have the attitude and always be believing like a child. You know, a child, you can, you can, 
you can write over your, his little bet, and, but he'll forget you tomorrow. You know, obviously, you, do, you don't do it on purpose. <laughs> but they will forgive, for, for, forgive you, and they will forget. They will believe. And it's important that we maintain and retain our childlike faith in the apostolic season. Because the Bible says if, you, if we do not become like one of these, we will not be able to, able to enter the kingdom of God. He says, you, he says, you are the son of God. And he had a further revelation. You are the king of Israel. The king of Israel means kingdom. Israel means God reigns. God rules. In other words, dominion. So it immediately had, when he was just in the presence of God, he had immediately had a revelation of the sonship, Jesus, the son of God, and the kingdom of God, and rulership and dominion. This is very important. Many times, when we come into the presence of a grace, the things that are established in that grace's life will immediately come over on us. That's why I say it's just good that you came this morning. It's just that, uh, remember that scripture that Bob Ben shared with us, that Joseph said to his, his brother, stay close to me. The, 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 the famine is coming, but you stay, stay close to me in Goshen. Be close to me. In this season, we need to be, see the set man, see the sent one as an umbrella. Stay close to the umbrella. You don't need to be sharp. You don't need to be wise. You don't need to be, have all sorts of things, but just stay close. Just be involved. Just be willing. Just be obedient. Just be Raise your hand. One of the things I experienced when we, I think, with the, the beginning of the year, when we were talking to, to I think it was at the Mainland Apostolic Forum, uh, I just got this revelation. Many are called, but few are chosen. Everyone is called, but only the ones that, who raises their hands are chosen. The ones that are will, willing. It's like as, as somebody said to me at the beginning of the year, he can't wait. He's just waiting, sitting and waiting for God to show him where he must become involved. I t- said, to, said, listen, the chances are good that you'll die waiting and God's not going to show you anything. Because you actually have to move out and engage. This is a season of activation. You need to come to Joseph. Joseph didn't go, ever went b- back to his father's house. Well, I think when they, uh, may, he, he sent his brothers back. But they had to come to Joseph. They had to draw near to Joseph. So this is a season. This is one of the important aspects of this season. Draw close to the one that God has sent to you. This is very important. I'll also show the distinction on how, what, what's the difference between the one that has called you and the other graces in the family. And what is the relation? Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly I say to you. Now Jesus, remember, he always spoke. He had a close relationship with his father. He was one with his father. He had a close relation. He, he had a revelation of his father. So he immediately um, then, he said, year after you shall see heaven open. And we all, you see, they draw to Philip and Nathaniel and Peter and um, Andreas, draw to Jesus. Now, John the Baptist is always, he's also there. He's close. He's, he's still baptizing. But he is now touching on a new revelation. First of, first of all, when we draw close to the one that God has sent to us, there will be open heavens over our lives. I say to you, Shiloh, household of faith, there will be open heavens over your life. You can take it this morning. Your life, your children, your family, everything, will, there will be an open heaven. And open heaven means a lot of things. And the angels of God, the sent ones of God, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So just stay close to where God is pouring out His glory. Because there will be ascending and descending angels on the Son of, of Man. So he, 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 gave, he gave them then a revelation of the messenger. Now, that immediately... Um, uh, uh, reminds us of Genesis 28 of Jacob. Now, Jacob was a heel grabber. His name means heel grabber. And I must say, I love Jacob. I think if you want to see anybody in Scripture that has really made transitions from started, it was just, he started, he was born second. He's a twin, but he was born second. And he desired with his whole, with his whole life, he, he, he virtually put his reputation, his relationships, his life 
on, 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 on the edge just to get the blessing, just to get the double portion, to get the, the firstborn right. Then he had all the, 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 the results of the way he dealt with his brother with, 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 in Laban's house, but eventually how he became out victoriously, which is many times to us showing how a people will migrate in the Lord, how he had an encounter with the Lord at the Jabbok and, and so forth. But let's just see. Now he's fleeing from his brother. That night, remember, earlier that day, he was, um, or just, this is just after he betrayed his brother out of his firstborn right, he's, he got the blessing and he had to run for his life. So he's now running for his life. And you would expect, he have a dream that night and God said to him, hold on, <laughs> you, you, just, just push through, just prevail. But, but God reveals to him the the most peculiar thing, the messenger. Verse 28, verse 12, Genesis 28, verse 12. Then he dreamed, and behold, so he was now lying there on the, he was sleeping, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. So God gives him the promises. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east. So God is clearly saying to him, Jacob, you will make it. You're not going to be killed tonight. He says to the north and to the south, many times when we go in need and we call on the name of the Lord, God has a way of just pouring out promises far bigger than our current problems. So this is also a reason why we need to go to the saint one, why we need to be in Bethel, in the house of God. Because God, you come, we come with our basic needs this morning. I say, Lord, if I can just make it through another day, die another day, <laughs> die hard. If I can just make it, Lord, I call on you, please, Lord Jesus, help me, help me. But God, the way he answers us, and, and we come many times with this mentality of I'm lost, I'm broken, I've got needs, I've got mistakes, Yes, I, I, I missed church the beginning of this year. I didn't tell my spiritual father that I, that I was actually joining another ministry. I, I, I saw that one. And, and the, the fact is, you can just come to God. You can just come to God despite what you've done wrong, despite all of this. And He will always pour out ma- many more blessings, many more promises than what we intended for coming. You see the attitude. God is just overwhelming us. This is why we need to stay close. Also, your descendants shall be, he says, behold, I am with you. uh, This is what God is saying this morning. I am with you. I am with you. There's nothing that prohibits you, that keeps you away, that, that, that takes you away from who I am. I'm with you. Just clean your mind. Lose it out of your mind. All those negative things, all those things that worry you, just leave it out of your mind. Just start living. Just start living life to the full. Just wake up. Let's see, it was in the dream. I think God couldn't wait for him to wake up. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land and I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. So God just just meeting him in great glory and great blessings. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, now revelation, reality comes to him. Surely this is, now you see, he had the revelation by night. He tried to do it himself. And if you really study Jacob, he loved the blessing, the firstborn right, but he tried to sort it out himself. He, he needed the Jabbok experience. So the next morning, he awoke. Then he awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. I've, what I've been looking for, I've encountered. The Lord, he's here. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, So the fear of God came upon his life. That's a blessing. It's a good thing. The fear of the Lord. How awesome is this place? Once again, we're referring now, see symbolism. See how he's speaking to this place. The place close to Joseph. The place place close to your father. The place close to the voice. The, The place close to the one. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his hand. You, you see, Jacob, 
so wanted the, the house of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. But we have the blessing to have it always. As long as we do not disconnect from the head. We always have this blessing. It's like the father of the prodigal said, my son, he said to the oldest brother, you are always with me. And what I have is yours. And what, uh, everything is, is at your disposal. This is the blessing that we have. Remember, we must receive by faith. We still people that receive by faith. And we live by faith. The righteous live by faith. If he withdraws, God's soul, Jesus, uh, God's soul can't reach you to bless you. So withdrawal is the most dangerous thing to do. He says, uh, then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head. The stone, what is the stone, stone symbolism of? It is Christ. My head, my thinking, my thoughts are laid on the stone. Uh, uh, the, uh, my, I have the mind of Christ. I'm on the rock. I'm not just putting my head in any place. I'm putting my, my, my head where it belongs, on the rock, where the word of the Lord can come to me where the doctrine can fill my life, where my whole mindset can be reprogrammed in accordance with what, how God sees things, how God has programmed things, and alignment. You see, it, that, that's why you will hear many times in the, in the apostolic that people say, the solution to many things aren't just prayer. Although prayer is very important, it changes our hearts. But our minds need to be addressed. And that is addressed through the Spirit, but through the Word that is brought to us by the Apostol apostles, mostly the apostles, or at least from an apostolic grace. Apostles deals with the head, with the mind, and prophets deal with the heart. I'm not saying those other graces aren't important, but we in this season can't, can't just be connected to a teacher or a shepherd or an evangelist. Somewhere there needs to be an ap apostolic grace. And we are very blessed that the apostolic is, 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 is God is is erecting the apostolic. He's in the process of erecting the apostolic. He had put his head, set at, as he said, so the, now the stone where his head was on is now a pillar. So in other words, this now becomes the pillar in the house of God, is the doctrine, is Christ. In the doctrine, uh, and very imp I'm going to say something very important now. The doctrine is, just, is not just doctrine, it's a person. If we don't experience doctrine as a person, we will become very legalistic. But it's always, what is the heart of this person? His name is Christ. His name is Christ Jesus. What is his intention? What is the, what is the mind of the Spirit? Recently we spoke when we, we had the dialogue and, and word go, go, went out at plate where it said, what is the commanded blessing in the preceding word? Or the commanded instruction in the preceding word? Jesus is speaking now. You know, for, like Lida said this morning, Noah had to go into the ark. Abram had to sacrifice his son. Jacob had to go to Egypt. Joseph had to build storehouses. Uh, John the Baptist had to tell the people of the way, prepare the way. Jesus, in in Jesus' time, people had to draw to Jesus. In different times, there's a different preceding word, although it's not contradicting the pre previous preceding word, but there's a new word now. Now I say to you, now draw close to Joseph. Be close to Joseph. Listen to the voice of Joseph. Um, come to the one in the one that you'll find in the one. Um, then he said, then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone. Okay. He says, and he, call, he had set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. So they put the stone as a pillar, poured oil on it. So it's the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing oil. That refers to the Spirit. So it's the Word and it's the Spirit. It's the Word in season and the Spirit. This is what we need. So in, the, in Bethel, we'll experience the Word and we'll experience the Spirit. And we'll experience the angels of God, the sent ones. We'll experience open heavens. We'll experience the presence of God. And we'll receive promises of God concerning our lives, our household, concerning His kingdom, and concerning His people. I just want to, uh, to tell you a story. When I was at school, my mother always said to me, we were AFM. My mother said to me, Jesus is coming soon. And I just hope that I can go at least finish my trick, get married, and, and so forth. I do a couple of things for all the good reasons. To just do a th few things in life. And obviously, I didn't study that hard, especially chemistry, um, because Jesus was coming. You know, and I many times pray, that Jesus, please come tonight, because I don't want to write the test tomorrow. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. 
My mother always said to me, Jesus is coming so soon. And this was, and I afterwards for many years thought, but yes, the, the AFMs had it all wrong. Till I ex- realized Jesus has come, he is coming, and he will come. My mother, and listen to yes, and this, the Lord actually revealed this to me. And then the Lord started working with me when I was a matric. And he started dealing with me, especially on the golf course, and uh, where I was a lot. And um, with my anger and with my mindset and with my attitude and with me on the throne. And I went through a period through matric. You know, and God is sometimes not hasty in your life. He just works things, he works things in because he's dealing, he's moving your heart. We had this experience this week where we dealt with a guy from the pain pool in Centurion. And the guy is now supposed to hand over the pain pool. We're going to start a church there. Now he don't want to hand it over. And I thought, well, I was a bit agitated. And I thought, why does he want to hand over the pain pool? He's now backtracking on the, he's reneging on the deal. And then the, the other pastor that was there, he's a very, he's, he's a pastor. He's, a, he's very sensitive. He said to me, Tinas, hang on. God's busy moving that guy's heart. He doesn't want to let go of something he experiences now. But in any event, God dealt with me in matric. He dealt with me and he dealt with me. And then January came and 1st of February, I had to go to the army. And, you know, the army was quite a place. The, the general corporal didn't know the Lord. And also his language wasn't aligned with the kingdom language. So God dealt with me. And I remember the day before I went to the army, I, was, I didn't realize what was happening to me. I got on my, 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 my bicycle and I rode out of town. And this, it's, we, we, my parents were staying in Sienekal. And I looked over the, the areas and suddenly I just knew. I, be, I needed to give my life to the Lord. I was saved when I was younger, but I need to give my life to the Lord now. I just knew I had that, and I gave my life to the Lord. The next day I went to army. If I didn't ca- give my life to the Lord that day, my whole life would have gone a different route. So what had happened? Jesus had come. So, many, so Jesus had come for me. So many times when there's an urgency, when the pastors say time is short, it means for those people, there's a window of opportunity to make a turn. There, sometimes the Lord will speak an urgent word, and the fear of the Lord will be there. Not because God is running out of time, but we are running out of time. And many times when it's our season, where God presents our season, and say, when, like I think it went out last week, that Paul Ben said, this is your time. We must really take note, sit up straight, and say, Lord, what adjustments must we make? Where must we repent? Why do you say it's my time? Because we don't want to miss our season. And I can tell you now, house, this is our season. Doesn't matter what your age is, whether you're young, whether you're older, this is our season. All right, so then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me. So now it seems if he's making a deal, but it's not what he's doing. He's just he's saying, remember, he's, he's full of the spirit. He's just had this dream. He's now making a proclamation. Um, he said, and there's something about tithing. Now, many times we speak about tithing and we use it in the context of sowing and reaping. Or we use it in the context of you must give your tithe. But I just want to bring a different perspective. And this really deals with our hearts concerning tithing. Once again, it's to do with the sent one in our lives. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me, protection. And keep me in this way that I am going, direction and wisdom. And give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, provision. So that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. So he says, he's, put it, turn it around. He's not saying God must all do all these things for me. He's actually saying God is doing all these things. He's got the revelation. And this is the revelation which we get in the house of God. We get the revelation of protection of direction and wisdom, of um, provision. We get the revelation here in the house of God. The wisdom of all these things come to us. He says, so that I come back to my father's house. In other words, that God brings me back to my father's house in peace. David said, I want to stay and remain in the house of the Lord forever. This is where we want to stay. We never want to go and leave that. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. So he's now making proclamations. He's prophesying over the place. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. So that tenth is a covenantal tenth. 
It is not, look, let's see how much I can give to the Lord. Listen, if you want to give a lot of money to the Lord, give an offer. But tithe is sacred. Tithe is covenantal. Tithe is I'm in covenant. Not I tithe to see if I'm not blessed. No. And I'm going to use a very, very, sorry, a very, um, I'm just going to use an example. This is a comparison. Ukraine is now in a war. And they, they need NATO to protect them. But they're not part of NATO. They're not co in covenant with NATO. So NATO can't protect them. You understand? So this is just a practical comparison. The same, now covenant and, uh, is, is, tithing is part of covenant. If you go and study Malachi 4, and you see what the promises that goes with tithing, is covenantal promises. Is there's a certain protection that you assign yourself to, a covenantal protection that you enter into covenant, which brings a protection over your life. This creates faith, isn't it? This brings another perspective on, on that obedience. So Jacob is not talking sowing and reaping. He's talking covenant. So Jesus commanded, uh, Jesus, now back to Matthew 11. I want to show you specific something about John the Baptist here. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. Now this was, look at what Jesus is doing. He's teaching and he's preaching in their cities. Remember Jesus for according to Hebrew, he's the, he's the first apostle. He's our apostle. All the apostles after G uh, Jesus is walking into the apostolic grace of Jesus. It's actually the apostolic grace of Jesus. So Jesus is he's showing us apostolic. What does, what does he do? He's now baptized. He was released. He's baptized by John the Baptist. He's released. Now he's preaching. First of all, what is he doing? Commanding disciples. Disciples need, sons, need to know how to receive commands. And not to say, you know, when somebody works for me, I always make this distinction. If you give somebody a, a task and say, okay, but just give me the telephone number of that person. No, just take the command. Go and work it out yourself. Get the telephone number yourself. You understand? So you always come back and you want to know how to do it. That's the difference between a mature son and an immature son. Immature son wants to know how to do it. Come back all the time with a lot of questions. Mature son will take the command, go and fulfill it, and come back with the answer. Amen. So he, said, he was commanding his 12 disciples. He, he, uh, that he, and from there, he then departed. So he, now it came to pass that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their city. So what is Jesus doing? He's going from city to city and he's teaching and preaching. Many times people think it's the end of the world. But we, the Lord said to me after COVID, in COVID, the Lord said to clearly, he gave a clear voice to me. And it was confirmed by Pop Ben. It was confirmed by various people. Occupy until I come. It's not the end of the world. I tell you, there's now a Ukrainian war, but more difficulties will come. Also, more good things will come. And we must trust God when COVID comes and it goes past that the world will be a better place afterwards. When the Ukrainian uh, war will be over, that the world will be a better place. We must trust God for that. We must trust that people will come to their senses and say atrocities is unacceptable. Th those sort of things that the world also deals with the world. But because I want to say this morning, because of the presence of the body of Christ, we are well off today. Because of the influence of God's body in the earth, it, the, the earth is becoming actually a better and better place. The worldly system is coming, becoming worse and worse. But the church is advancing. It's an ever-increasing government that is ever advancing, and we need to always be part of that government. But because of the presence of the Lord, I tell you, because of the presence of the Lord, the South Africa is still standing. Wasn't it for the children of God, uh, we would have collapsed in entirety. But the Lord is upholding us, and that it reminds me of that scripture that says, He upholds all things by the word of His power. Um, not the power of His word, but by the word of His power. So, He commanded disciples. I just want to see if this may be my mic. Disciples are instructed. Cities are teach and preach to. Jesus finished the one and do the other. So, now the question is, now it comes, and I'll read it to you. Now you'll see John. Remember all the revelations that John had. He saw the Son of God. He had, through history, had the, he knew there was something on Jesus. And um, when John had heard, now Matthew 11, verse 2 to 3, uh, when, 
uh, Matthew 11, verse 2 to 3. And when John had heard in the prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? So John had the revelation. But listen, where is, where is Jesus right now? He's preaching. Maybe I must just do the handout. I think it's this connection. I think it's maybe this connection. Is it okay? Just Thank you. Okay, so Jesus, so John is in prison, but Jesus is preaching in the cities and he's teaching and he's commanding disciples. So John has gone, he's in prison, so just see the symbolism. So he was prison and he heard about the works of Christ. He sent two of his disciples. So there was something about the works of Christ, which I, I don't know if he expected it to be different. Maybe he expected Christ to take over the Roman Empire or destroy or judge the Romans. He's, Jesus' ministry was just foreign to him. Remember, he was the one in the wilderness, crying in the other side of the wilderness. He was the one at, uh, 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 at, the, at the place of ferry, the walk over. But you never see John operating in the promised land. Um, so, and he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And this is what I really heard. Are you the one? That the Lord wants us to make sure who's the one in our lives. We must make sure. We can't, we, can't be, we can't flirt around with ministry. We can't be here and then next week we go and visit another place. Not be committed. You know, my wife, is she not, if she's not here this morning, I would have known where she is. I would have known what she's doing. If I were not here, she would have known what I'm doing, where I am. And with ministry... If these things are the most important things in our life, we can't flirt around with it. We can't play around with it. We need to be committed. We need to be faithful. There needs to be a faithfulness upon our lives. And, and remember there was Jake, uh, there was Abram. He was the lesser. And there was Melchizedek. He was the better. In a father-son relationship, there's always the better and the lesser. But the better is there for the lesser in order to serve bread and wine to the lesser. In, or, in order to bless the lesser. So we need to be faithful in our conduct towards the one that God has sent us. Not bypass, not trespass, honor. So he says, are you the coming one or do we look for another? He had a revelation. I saw that about this season. Many prophets, I know of prophets that had a, had a revelation of this season. But when the season came, they walked away. They were offended. John prophesied Christ. He saw him in the spirit, but Christ did not fit his preconceived image and expectation in his mind of what Christ must look like. We must once and for all fix in our minds who is the one that Christ has sent to us. Many walk after uncles, ministers, but our discipling can really just come from one source. In the army, I had one lieutenant, one corporal, who I had to listen to. Not my, the next company's uh, lieutenant or corporal. I had to listen to my lieutenant. Otherwise, I would have died. So this is the order of God. We need to be single-minded. We can't just go around and listen and read and everything. And I'll show you now how those things fit in. There's a place for it. But I'll show you how it works. So my natural sons have only one father and they have only one mother. There will be chaos in their lives if they now have to start listening to different parents. Especially when they're young. So in other words... I may not be the best, I may, there may be some of my friends that are much better fathers, maybe in different areas, but much better than I am, but God gave me to them. They must listen to me, and then there's no confusion. That's how it works in the family. They will be confused, disobedient, and bear very little fruit if they listen to everybody. They will miss it and be inaccurate. They may sit under the teaching and preaching of other graces, but they can only receive instructions from the one source. They will otherwise run off to uncles if they don't like my voice until they hear what they want to hear, where people have itchy ears. When Jesus spoke to the angels of the churches in Revelation, each one had, you know, God had order. He went to Revela in the Revelation, in the Revelation 2 and 3, and he spoke to the angel of the church, Pegamos, angel of the church of Ephesus, angel of the church in Laodicea. He didn't speak to all of them. He spoke to the angel. So God has appointed the angel over a group of people. I believe this, and people say, yeah, but that angel, is it, a, is it, I believe it's a, 
it, not I believe, I know it's a sent one. And then there's angel, angelic ministry in that person's life. You will always see that. So in our, in our lives, Dr. Ben is that angel that was sent. We must have no two thoughts about it. Otherwise, the question is, what are we doing here? Then we should be at another place. We need to be able to listen to commands and stay close and listen to, and, and be single-minded in that. Um, God will speak specifically. God will speak to the angel in our lives, but for our benefit. He will digest. He will um, distribute the message as the Lord leads him. But the angel will receive the word that God has for us as a corporate company. Now, verse 4, Matthew 11, verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. He says, so in other words, John is sitting in prison. John baptized the, the, the people of God. He prepared the way. But he said to him, you must now tell John that after his ministry, a major activation has come. And I want to say to you, you can write the word down, activation today. There's this season, in this season, in this apostolic season. We had a lot of the apostolic season up to now was prepare the way of the Lord. A lot of that. But I tell you, there's a change coming. Now it is activation. Look, this, is a, this is a word. That's the, I believe that's part of the change that has come in the season. It's activation. Activation will just be everywhere. But now listen to the principle. Stay to, close to Joseph. The activation will stay. Although Joseph will not do everything. But the activation will stay close to Joseph. Under his command. So don't bypass in this season. Don't try and do it on your, on your own or on my own. Let us... Bring it close to Joseph and make sure it is blessed. Um, the blind will, he says, tell John the, the, what you hear and see. In other words, there is revelation you receive. The, the faith, you, faith come by hearing. What faith is in you? He says, go to John and through faith and seeing is rev revealing. In other words, uh, what has been revealed to you. Not just what you see with the natural eye, but go and tell him about your faith and go tell him about your experience. He says, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. So, very important, that is activation. John preached the word, John prepared the, the nation of Israel for the activation. But now the activation is there. So Jesus say, listen, first, to strengthen John's faith, go and tell him what you see, that there's activation happening. He says, but blessed is he who is not offended of me. You see, that's the big, big danger, offense. It's easy to pick up offense. There could be reason to pick up offense. Misunderstanding happened and offense, but offense cuts us off from the main street. So we need to constantly, we will need, that is the one thing which we must take responsibility and say, I will not be offended. I refuse to be offended. And I think it's a scripture in Psalm 119 that says, they that are in your law will not be offended, will not stumble. Jesus then continued to send a message to John. He is taking the wool from John's eyes. He opened John's eyes with a testimony of activation of God's people. This will be our activation as well, our testimony as well in this season. There will be a lot of activation. His ministry resulted in actions. I believe we are now in a time when actions will follow. These actions are natural. We, won't, we will not say we will do this and that. We will say we are doing this and that. This will, this will be the, 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 the change. And what I found in this season where we are now, you say something and it happens. It, it's just you say something, you, you must just... You, you, you get into it, you activate, you engage, and then you say it, and it happens. Amen. These actions are natural, but have symbolic spiritual meaning for us. They had to tell John, the one crying in the wilderness is the pre in the previous season, that the current season did not take place in the wilderness, but in their cities. They further had to tell what they hear, obedience, and see, are revealed to them. They are enlightened with, they, are perceive, they perceive, understand, and are revealed to them. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, deaf hear, dead are raised up, poor have the gospel, the good news that empower them to come out of their poverty, preach to them. That empowers them. He then continued to tell John, makarios is that word, blessed. Makarios means, um, Louis Malherbe said, blessed, blessed, blessed. Heavy blessed. Woos blessed. 
enormously super. Um, any, any word that you can think, but that's if you're really blessed, that's that word, Bakarios. He said, blessed, utterly blessed are you who are not offended to me. In other words, the danger of offense is so dangerous that we can't afford to be offended, to be offended uh, with who I am. Otherwise, you will be cut off. Listen, what he do not say. Otherwise, you will be cut off from all the above and not enjoy me, not partake in me, what I bring and who I am. Those who cannot connect to the one find themselves in prison, removed from action. They may feel blessed, surrounded by word, doctrine, CDs, and messengers, but still miss out because they feel safe and rich in what they have, yet they, they short the one, just the one. He said, are you the one? Yes, I am the one, and you need the one. So I want to testify this morning in my life. This, you see, this is what we must make out for ourselves. My life, Dr. Ben is the one. So I can, I, I love all the graces out there. But when it comes to ministry instruction, that is where I say, sir, yes, sir. I enjoy the word from all the apostles and the prophets and the teachers and many others. When it comes to instruction from God concerning my ministry or our ministry, I only receive it from Dr. Ben and not from an uncle. I have seen in my life how pastors, ministers, ministry committees betray men of God because there is no true commitment. You need the one because the one is committed to your ministry. I've seen that. Now, I want to maybe just finish with, with a scripture in, in Samuel. And I want to just show the distinction between the one that he sent to us, the messenger, and the other graces. What role does the graces? Because surely the graces of God, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, my brethren, everybody plays an important role. But I'll show you what it, uh, it is. 1 Samuel 25 verse 2. Now there was a man in Moan whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. Now think of, of, Na of Nabal as a pastor. Think of him as a pastor of a big church. He was very rich. In other words, he had many sheep. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And you see, you will always have goats when you have sheep. Um, and he was sharing his sheep in Carmel. In other words, he was pastoring his people in Carmel. Carmel is quite a a significant place you know it's a holy mountain that it's a mountain where is elijah elijah did big things the name of the man was nabal and the name of his wife abigail and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance now think of the wife as the church it's the woman nabal let's say that's the pastor or that's a specific system that's a specific operating system but the man was harsh and evil in his doings he was of the house of caleb Nabal is, a, so in other words, he's the house of Judah. He was a, a Judean. Nabal is a symbol of men of God of previous season who have lost connection with the saint one, Caleb, but still prosper as a, as a result of their inheritance. Abigail is a picture of the bride of Christ. David is the picture of Jesus Christ. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was sharing his sheep, so in other words, David is in the wilderness, there's somebody sharing his sheep, so David goes to him. In other words, you go to that church. You say, Yo, I, I just need, I'm in need of a church. David sent 10 men, and, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, peace to your house, and peace to all you have. Now I have heard that you have sharers. Your shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them. Nor were, so in other words, we did not steal your sheep, nor your, sh nor, nor your shepherds. Nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel. In other words, we did not take anything from them. We were just a blessing to them. Ask your young men. So Jesus said to the pastor, listen, I've just blessed you. But there's now a new season. It's, now, it's, it's called David, the Davidic. And this season, I want to introduce to your house. And our pastor say, no, thank you. I'm blessed. My church is so big. I'm prospering. I don't need anything new. No, you'll just see his, his mindset. Ask your young men and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes. For we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and do to your son David. So in other words, help the new season. David have just been good to Nabal and help him prosper. The 10 men refer to tested or proven. Pr 10 is the number for proven in the scripture. 10 is the number uh, and, and if you found faithful. So the faithful must, remember, the faithful must continue, continually buy oil 
the t- remember the ten virgins for their lambs and their containers. So Nabal had an opportunity to serve David and the messengers. He treated them with contempt. This is how many pastors and leaders treat the current day sent ones. And this is what I'm saying today is, is, is I'm not ag- against a person, but against a system. So that God wants to kill the heart of Nabal and give it the heart of David, give it the heart of flesh, and open up those hearts to his, to his new move. This is how many pastors, uh, they speak evil of them, make them to be rebellious and refuse to receive them. Nabal have no discernment in his only, in his only sheep program, own ministry, own farm, own church program, own church growth program. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Then Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? The, there are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my sharers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? So David's young men turned on their heels and went back and they came and told him all these words. So I'm going to jump now to verse 42. So all of this, obviously David wanted to kill Nabal and then Abigail. So Abigail rose in haste and rode on a donkey. Look at the symbolism here. And there's a picture that we must see here and this will bring understanding. She rode on a donkey attended by five of her maidens and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. This was after Nabal was killed. The spirit of Nabal was killed. So we're not referring to a person. We're referring to an operating system that says, I don't care about the rest of the body of Christ. But look at this. Abigail rose in haste and rose on a donkey. So Abigail rode on a donkey. It speaks of an obedient posture towards Jesus. She was, a, she was attended to by her five maidens. Attended by her five of her maidens. So what is the five? The five is the fivefold. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You see, that's the role of the fivefold. We have the sent one which is the messenger of Christ in our lives. We follow his voice. But we are attended to by the fivefold. The fivefold look after uh, Abigail. We have come to serve and not to be, um, the fivefold equip the bride and serve and serve her. Listen, here's a very important thing. Jesus said, I have come to serve and not to be served. So this is the purpose of the fivefold, to be servants of the ministry, to equip the saints, to equip Abigail. So that's where the fivefold comes in. So if, you, if somebody else comes here, a prophet comes and share a word here, and it's somebody who is not the saint one, but it comes in the name of the saint one, that is normally to build the body up, uh, up to equip the body, to strengthen the body. Strengthen, remember Paul Ben said in the beginning of the word, that's a, yeah, that's a very important word. Strengthen, build, um, activation, those are important words. We have come to serve and not to be served. She follows the one. So she's following the messengers of David. She's following the voice of David. She's following the voice of the one. But to become David's wife. Nabal is killed. The spirit of Nabal is killed in men of God when they hear about David and his messengers and David's wife. You hear what I'm saying? So when, when Abigail went to Nabal, she told him everything David did. Everything. <laughs> and everything that happened. That killed Nabal. God killed Nabal. That is not to say a person will be killed, but a certain attitude of I protect my my territory and I will not be a blessing to this new season and what God is doing. That spirit was killed when when he heard about David. The one in my life leads me to the one in capital letters. While I am attended to by apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. In other words, there's many good Christian books. There are many. We've got a book table there. Those are the fivefold serving us with their giftings. When somebody pray with us, when somebody serve us in the kingdom, those are important, but we must not be confused to whose voice we listen. I mean directional. The one in my life leads me to the one while I'm attended to by, yeah. The wedding where his word in me become the best one which he served to the guests. That is where he's leading me to. I is be leading me to the place where I become the wife of David. Where, we, where I become in, walk into my brideship. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, and I'm finishing. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Let me just explain this. 
Paul says to the Corinthians. Paul was very jealous of the Corinthians. Go and look at what Paul said to the Corinthians. He was, although they were a bit um, uh, chaotic, Paul was, 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 was serious about the Corinthians. He said, I am, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. This Paul saying this to the Corinthians. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So what is Paul's intention? It's just to see the Corinthians married to Christ. In other words, what is married? Married Married is in the full benefits of the kingdom, mar- of the king. Marriage is, is, is walking in, over, in an overcoming lifestyle. Marriage is where you enjoy the wine of the wedding, where, where the water has become wine, where, where the water has become a manifestation, like in John 2, on the third day there was a wedding, where the water becomes, where the word that we've been working into our lives become a reality, become a manifestation. Now, this is the purpose. So, this picture of, of Abigail is, is bringing in, is showing us clearly. Revelations 1.15 says, His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a surface, furnace, and His voice as the sound of many waters. So, many waters, one voice. Now, I just want to say, finish off by saying one last thing. John the Baptist, there's in, I think when you read in Luke, and I've always wondered about this scripture. It says, John did not drink wine or eat bread. I always knew he didn't eat wine. Remember when his birth, when the angel spoke to his mother. But I never knew he didn't eat bread. Now, Lida served the bread and the wine here today. What is the bread and the wine a, a sign of? It's covenant, but it's passed over. It's the plan on the wall, on the post, that the angel of death can pass over. And just use this as symbolism, not, not as criticism. But John did not pass over. He was a man of God. He was a saint one. He he knew about the voice. But he did not eat bread. And he did not drink wine. He did not continually trust in the voice that God has sent him. You must always ask yourself. We must always ask ourselves. Why are we here? How did we end up being here? Did not God send somebody into our lives? And how... How, how wrong would it be to walk away from the one that God has sent into our life? I mean, this is just, we've, we've passed over that. We're not like that anymore. So John did not pass over. He ended up in jail. You don't find him in the city's preaching. You don't find him as a disciple of Jesus. You don't find him following the voice. The warning this morning is we can, we can, we, we can have the greatest ministry, but not enter, not pass over into the fullness that God has for us by offense God wants to manifest I want to say to you this morning God wants to manifest the things that we can't even comprehend will manifest in our life God wants to bring it about but he looks for a vessel that are able to to carry the water so that the water can be turned into wine and be served God wants to turn our word into wine he wants to turn our lives into wine this is his desire but we need to be aligned in order to be served as wine. So this morning, let us confess. Let us just close our eyes. Let us just all confess that we have not followed the voice, that we have become confused on the way, that we have lost track, the, 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 the righteousness, tracks of righteousness, that we have lost to a certain extent. And let me say this morning, Lord, if you have sent somebody in our lives, We're going to follow that voice. We're going to obey that voice. We're going to listen to that voice. We thank you for the fivefold, but we're going to follow that voice because we will eat the fruit of the Lamb. We repent of a a lethargic um, uh, attitude, of an attitude of I can work it out myself. Uh, We repent of, uh, of, of becoming lost in this season and through COVID and everything. And Lord, we thank you that you draw the net this morning and you just say, everybody, just come, come into new alignment. That our hands be strengthened. Our knees be strengthened. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. for you. The biggest sin is to reject the one that God has sent. When Jesus said, he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times I wanted to gather you as a uh, hen cheeks, but you would not. So that I could not heal you. That your, your heritage will end up in desolation. Lord, thank you that we can draw this morning to the one and to the place, to the Beth El where the angels are ascending and descending, 
And I prophesy and I release. I release a grace of great favor that is upon this house. Even greater favor that is coming upon this house. Lord, thank you that you're making an example of this house. And of these people, of this company. Lord, of a people called out by your name. That others will come after and say, teach us in the ways of our Lord. Teach us in what you have been walking because we are looking for that wine. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for everyone. We thank you for your preservation, your provision, your protection. Lord, thank you for your guidance and your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, amen.